I know a lot about professor harassment. This next story is from NPR's All Things Considered. It deals with, among other things, Bruce Gilley, who is also at Portland State University. And full disclosure, I know Bruce very well, and we've become friendly as a result of what what he's gone through. I think you'll find this story about right-wing and left-wing views of professor harassment quite interesting. Well, this week, NPR is examining free speech in a digital age. Today, we look at college campuses. In the past two years, more than 250 university professors around the country have been the targets of cyber harassment campaigns. Some have lost their jobs. Others fear for their family safety. We already know the vast majority of these professors what happened? Joshua Katz from Princeton. We already know who wrote a piece in Quillette about the Black Student Union. We already critical of it. We already know why the vast majority of professors are being harassed because they've um, said something that's not morally fashionable that goes against the orthodoxy, particularly woke woke orthodoxy. Oh, you, we can look at that from the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, among other places. Anya Kamenetz reports on how professors are pushing back against the cyber mobs. You see my light flashing there. That's all the calls I've been getting. You have 20 unheard messages. Professor Albert Ponce teaches political science at Diablo Valley, a community college in California's East Bay. For the past few months, his answering machine has been filling up with threatening messages like these. Albert Ponce, you are a piece of gutter slug that needs his neck snapped, okay? Call me if you need me. I'll do it for you. Rape, baby, piece of trash. It all started last October. Ponce was invited to give a public lecture on campus about his academic specialty, race and racism. So we begin with the fact that we exist in a white supremacist, patriarchal... Right there. Notice the first example they gave was somebody who is being harassed and first let me say i'm completely it's terrible that the guy's being harassed it's terrible that people are doing that to him he has every right to participate in the marketplace of ideas i don't know if he's tenured or what what his situation is but this is unacceptable we debate ideas we have discourse about ideas so let's put that in but notice the first thing that they said in this story the first is somebody who's promulgating the orthodoxy and and other people who are leaving horrific messages for him, which is the slim minority of cases. Also, look how many words and how much time they devote to right-wing versus left-wing harassment. So we begin with the fact that we exist in a white supremacist, patriarchal, heteronormative capitalist system. That's from an edited video of the talk, one that was circulated in various right-wing forums online. In the speech, Ponce said there was a white supremacist in the White House and that Thomas Jefferson raped many of his slaves. In today's highly polarized political climate, academics get attacked routinely when they bring up race or diversity. Huh. Hmm. There are examples across the country. After he tweeted, all I want for Christmas is white genocide. Think about that. All I want for Christmas is white genocide. So we've crossed beyond from a little bit extreme. Yeah, it is a bit extreme. I would say that he has, to say the least, I would say that he certainly has a right to do that. Sure. And he has protected speech. Mm -hmm. I think advocating for mass murder of people on the basis of their race, like if someone said, all I want for Christmas is black genocide. Mm -hmm. Of course, the answer to that is that it doesn't comport with the power dynamics. And that's why you can only be racist one way up. That's why they've had to redefine racism. But... Um, all I want for Christmas is a white genocide. Okay. George Ticarello Marr was placed on leave from Jacksell University in Pennsylvania. At Brooklyn College, Laurie Rubel published a National Science Foundation-funded research paper about how math teachers in segregated urban schools can address equity. Okay, again, the vast majority of time, all these examples, these are fringe cases. These are very small cases in, re in relation to the total number of people who have been harassed, such as myself. The on-air take of Fox News commentator Greg Gutfeld was... A math professor at Brooklyn College claims that... Remember, for NPR, Fox is always the enemy. 
that merit-based education, meaning rewards linked to hard work and talent, is a tool of evil whiteness. The right doesn't have a monopoly on... Okay. Do you want to... I mean, I... It's well, Greg is taking a satirical look at, at something ridiculous that was said. I don't think anything's wrong with that. Obviously, nobody's advocating for violence except for the professor that wants a white genocide. I suppose that may go against Twitter standards, you would think, but uh, I don't know. He won't be, be banned if he's even on Twitter. Monopoly on these attacks. Colleges like UC Berkeley, the home of the free speech movement, have erupted with violent responses to conservative speakers. And professors have sometimes been subject to equally intense harassment from the left, as well as the right. Bruce Gilley at Portland State University published a paper in an academic journal last fall titled The Case for Colonialism. There is a wealth of evidence in particular that's come out in the last 10 years that shows quite overwhelmingly positive benefits in terms of democracy, in terms of public health in terms of human rights. The paper incited liberal outrage. I had never experienced that kind of mass global mob. I just want to say this is a finer point on this, but I don't like how the word liberal is just tossed around. Mm -hmm. I I, I would say it, I don't know what the word in that sense would be. Liberal and mob doesn't really go together, does it? Yeah, I don't don't like how the, the term is tossed out. Now, it's also interesting that they chose that particular example's example, The Case for Colonialism, which is a really interesting paper, I don't know if you've read it or not, but um, that they know that NPR listeners would find particularly distasteful. Mm -hmm. I took fright, frankly. The article was withdrawn after threats of violence against Gilly and the editor of the journal that published it, Third World Quarterly. Third World Quarterly, yeah. So I want to talk about that for a second. The rules of engagement have changed. The rules of engagement used to be someone publishes an article, and if you don't like it, you publish a response to that, preferably in the same journal, but it doesn't have to be. Now, the rules of engagement, if you don't like an idea, you threaten to murder the journal editor. You threaten to kill Bruce Gilley. Oh, and they also file Title IX investigations against Bruce Gilley. That's the other thing. These offices have been weaponized. So I think it's really good that they did have uh, Gilly on. I would have loved to see him. I would have loved to see the implications of that and have him discuss that more. But kudos to them for having Gilly on. There is a difference in patterns of online harassment between the right and the left. On the left, threats tend to originate from within campus communities. Thousands of self-identified academics, for example, signed online petitions calling for Gilly's article to be retracted. On the right, there's an entire network of groups like Professor Watchlist. Yeah, not only to, for his article to be retracted, for his tenure to be revoked, for his position to be uh, taken away from him, for his doctorate to be taken away from him. What was the an outcome? Did he lose his job? No, he's at PSU and they're, they go after him constantly. In fact, he's one of the most published people. These are objective metrics. You can go to Google Scholar. You can punch in Bruce Gilley. Uh, he is, he put forth a, a conservative, even Berkeley has a conservative uh, class in conservative political philosophy. His class in conservative political thought was rejected because it didn't have enough diversity. And, and instead of saying, you know, oh yeah, we'll put, you know, why don't you put Thomas Sewell in or Larry Elder, but that's not what they want for diversity. But instead of saying, we don't want our kids to learn about this because we think it's hateful, that would at least be more honest, mm-hmm. right? You could disagree with someone, but they'd be honest with you. Uh, so they've gone after him. He's now the cur- the most hated man at Portland State University currently. Or self-described alt-right media collective, The Red Elephants. They posted a video in December about Albert Ponce, attacking what they called Marxist, communist, disgusting rhetoric that they spew in these classrooms to indoctrinate these children. They used it to kick off an initiative called Film Your Marxist Professors. Meanwhile, websites Campus Reform and The College Fix pay students to report from classrooms. These tales spread to alt-right media sites like Stormfront and Breitbart. Okay, so there are multiple things going on here. The obsession with the with what the right is doing, as opposed to the fact that the overwhelming majority of this is from the left. The other thing that's going on is, I mean, I think it's actually a really interesting question. Should students be allowed to post criticism and commentary or actually just what their professors are saying and post it online? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a really interesting question. Maybe it'd be a, a nice second segment. And to mainstream outlets like Fox News, The New York Post, 
even CNN. While self-identified trolls uncover and post people's personal information and concoct false accusations. But some of the academics are fighting back. Albert Ponce's faculty senate is drafting a resolution that he hopes will be adopted by the district board of governors to make clear that the colleges will stand behind scholars with provocative beliefs. Yeah, provocative beliefs if they're on the left. Mm -hmm. They're more than happy to, not even, it's not even the left, it's not tradition, it's, it's, that that comports with critical social justice ideology. In fact, there's something at Portland State uh, that w- the, the video, the National Association of Scholars had to take down the video. Uh, they talked about criticism of critical race th- uh, uh, scholarship being itself a form of uh, racism and discrimination. I mean, it's, it's really, it's a really um, um, dishonest portrayal of what the situation is, both numerically and what kind of speech they're talking about. We can't just say anything because we are professors. Producing academic research, we're able to make claims, maybe provocative, very provocative. But you can say anything. Should be able to say anything. Yeah, you can say anything you want. To some, to many, but we ground it and we back it up with evidence. Yeah, evidence that's in journals that's been laundered, idea laundered. He is resolute, but the harassment is taking a toll on him and his family. But the thing that's most troubling is, you know, the real threats and against my family. And that's when, uh, you know, the doxing of, you know, pictures uh, on the web and of my nine-year-old daughter. They are afraid for their lives. All it takes is one. He and his wife try not to park their cars in the same places every day. And they scan the street from the window at night. What have you told your daughter? Anything? Um, No, not yet. Uh, I'm trying to shield her as much as possible. Anya Kamenetz, NPR News. So if you just listen to this. And you didn't, you weren't familiar with it. What would you think about where is this problem coming from? Who, who would you think that this affected the most? Leftist professors who were Correct. talking about contra- quote unquote controversial views. Right. And you know who this really affects the most? Exactly the opposite. Yeah. And the idea is that, that you would frame this in terms of a free speech thing with leftist professors who are, you know, against racism. And there are all these racists out there who somehow... Uh, in cahoots, uh, it's just it, it's just not. Again, I understand that NPR doesn't like facts and evidence and data. I, I get it. That's just a dishonest portrayal it of, is. of the situation. And even if you look at the number of of people who have resigned, they're overwhelmingly. They're, well, increasingly they're becoming liberal, but they're just they're resigning for reasons that that they can't teach in environments that are completely woke and they can't even teach the integrity of their disciplines. Right. And no one supports violence and threats uh, on the right or the left. Certainly. No one should. I, no one should. I mean, yeah. no one that should be taken seriously. Right. I don't support that. You don't support that. Absolutely not. Which is Absolutely why it's not. somewhat disturbing that NPR and the episode we listened to uh, not too long ago, w- had somebody on from Antifa who does support the use of violence. Correct. So I find it a little hypocritical that they're Correct. talking about somebody who's receiving threats of violence while at the same time promoting an organization that traffics in threats and violence. So it's hard for me to take NPR seriously on this topic. Yeah, and I guess what's, I guess it really is unfortunate that if you trust a source, and you're, you know, you get on in the car and you're listening to this and you've just heard some background noise, some chatter about free speech on college campuses, and you listen to this, you really would think that this is you an would. overwhelmingly uh, 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 a problem with people who are anti-racist or what have you. When in the fact of the matter is this, that's just simply not true. It's like, it's opposite land. Right is. We have to end this segment with an image that NPR posted on its website that goes along with the story. Life cycle of a cyber harassment campaign. One, Professor Lori Rubel publishes a paper online. Two, college student writes a story about it on campus reform. Three, Rubel is attacked on alt-right and neo-Nazi websites. Everybody's a neo-Nazi. And if you disagree with her, you have to be in this with her ideas. You have to be a neo-Nazi. And on two different shows on on Fox News, remember, NPR has set itself up as against Fox News. Even if Fox News said two plus two equals four, I picked that example on, on purpose, it could not possibly be true. Five, individuals attack her on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, etc. Love the kind of the Pac-Man graphics. 
at and over email, U.S. mail, and phone, etc. With each new story, the cycle starts up again. My goodness, what a image that is almost completely divorced from reality and has it ass backward. Okay, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. If you put stupid shit on the internet, people are going to respond to it. That does not mean that they're neo-Nazis. That does not mean, that does actually not mean anything. You can criticize somebody's idea, and particularly a professor who's putting their ideas out there. Criticism of those ideas are not the same as a criticism of a person. The other thing about this graphic that's grossly misrepresented is that it makes it appear is that someone on the left put something out and then there's this wide scale attack on the right. When in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It's not saying this doesn't happen, but in terms of the incidents that happen, it, you can look at the Foundation for Individual Rights and in Education. On campuses, this is by the left. So somebody will say something and then the left will savage them and the erosion of academic freedom of speech comes that way and personal attacks come come from that. And finally, it is very interesting that Professor Rubel blocked both my co-host, Matt Thornton, and myself on Twitter. I've had no interaction with her as far as I know. Nope. Nope. Okay. Thank you for watching this excerpt from an episode of All Things Reconsidered. To watch the full episode, please follow the link in the description. Boo, boo, boo.